If you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? Would you pick a tropical beach or an ancient monument or a famous ruin? Would you have a hard time deciding which location to pick? I know exactly where I would go if I could choose any location in the world, and it is right here, the Kerguelen Islands. Watch the rest of the video and see if you can figure out why this remote group of islands is my number one choice. Several hundred years ago, European explorers realized there was more land on the north of the equator than there was to the south, and that didn't seem right to them. They thought that the land masses needed to be balanced. So they started sailing south, looking for another continent, which they named Terra Australis, Southland. They expected Terra Australis to be huge, like the landmass you can see drawn on this old map. And while they did find another continent, which they named Australia, most of what they found was a lot of ocean. But in the middle of all that ocean, they did discover new islands. They named these ones Kerguelen, after the French explorer who was the first person to see the islands. The Kerguelen Islands are right in the middle of a path known as the Furious Fifties. To explain that, let me show you a real-time map of the world showing the wind currents. The brighter green, the stronger the wind. You can see how, for the most part, it's windier over the ocean than it is over the land. Well, check out what happens when we turn the view south to Antarctica. Do you notice how much windier it is down here? The air currents down here are so strong, they've earned nicknames based on the latitude. The Roaring Forties, the Furious Fifties, and the Screaming Sixties. They're what drive the Antarctic Circumpolar Current, which is the largest ocean current in the world. What does this mean for the Kerguelen Islands? It means they're super windy. Most of the time, the wind blows 50 miles per hour. It can gust up to as high as 200 miles per hour. It rains or snows about 300 days a year. I want you to imagine if you were the first person to discover this island, what kind of plants and animals would you expect to find? What do you think the islands would look like? Remember, these islands are extremely isolated. The closest landmass is Antarctica, and that's more than a thousand miles away. Pause the video and make a few predictions. If you printed out the worksheet, now's a good time to do the first page. Now, let's take a look at the Kerguelen Islands. If you expected to find penguins, then you were right. Kerguelen is home to millions of birds, not just penguins, but flying birds too. It also has a lot of seals. There's a lot of grass on Kerguelen, and moss and other small plants. There are glaciers on the island, a lot of lakes, and many rivers. But there are no trees, not a single one. And before people came, there were no land mammals either. No mice or bears or rabbits or deer or anything like that. But the island does have insects. One of them starts out looking like this. It's a caterpillar. And after it makes a chrysalis and goes through metamorphosis, it becomes a butterfly? This doesn't look very much like a butterfly, does it? But it is a butterfly, and it only lives on the Kerguelen Islands and nowhere else in the world. It has wings, but they're very small wings and they can't be used for flying. You can probably imagine that if the Kerguelen butterfly did have large wings, it would look more like the butterflies we're familiar with. Or if the butterflies that we are familiar with did not have wings, then they'd look more like the butterflies on Kerguelen. Why do you think the monarch butterfly from North America has large wings, but the Kerguelen butterfly doesn't? If you're thinking about the wind, you're right. It's so windy on Kerguelen that there's only one rule for where to park when driving on the island. Always park facing the wind. Because if you park the other direction, the wind will tear the doors off the car when you open them. Kerguelen is so windy that entire waterfalls are sometimes blown up into the sky instead of falling down to the ocean. That white mist you can see in the picture that looks like smoke, that's a whole waterfall being blown back up a canyon. Flying is simply too risky in an environment like this. Insects that fly get blown off the island and never return. So every insect in Kerguelen, from little gnats to butterflies, evolved to be wingless. The Kerguelen Islands are my favorite island because of this fascinating ecology that they have and how isolated and remote they are. Few places on earth are as untouched and unexplored as Kerguelen, 
and I can't think of any other location outside of Antarctica that didn't have a single human footprint until the late 1700s. So if I were able to spend a month anywhere on the planet, this is where I would go to see and to write about the incredible botany and insect life unique to this island. And as Matt's dad frequently reminds me, to also be cold and wet pretty much the entire time. I would like to give a special thank you to Bertrand Lesort for giving me permission to use his photographs of the Kerguelen Islands in this video. Merci beaucoup. De rien. He is a very talented photographer and on his website you can find beautiful galleries, not just of the Kerguelen Islands, but many other locations as well. I have a link in the description of this video so you can check out his website if you'd like. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and worksheet, I hope you'll subscribe and come back next week for another science video.